had a more popular player than Zane Gonzalez today. <laughs> it was a heck of a kick by Zane. Um, yeah, so it was pretty hot out there today. How long was it? 56 yarder. 56. Yeah, and he had to run down to the goal line, you know, run to the 50 and run back out just to get his heart rate up. And a lot of guys can shoot with no, you know, try to simulate a game. And, you know, he nailed it as he's done all camp. I don't know a lot to talk about Robbie off the field, but in terms of on the field, what does he need to do to, do to get back? I just said I didn't want to talk about his tweet. That's all. I'll make that clear. Because afterwards, someone asked me, like, no, I just I didn't want to talk about his tweet. You know, like people can tweet whatever they want. But I'm happy, happy to talk about anything about Robbie. What about his production? Where do you, where, what does he need to do to get back to where he was two years ago? First? I think in this offense, Robbie will have a ton of production. Um, I think last year was a confluence of many different events. And... Um, um, I think in this offense, the way we're doing things, I think he'll uh, he'll have a ton of production. Can he be utilized in the same way, or is it going to be different? I think uh, you know we kind of uh, Ben had him initially when he was initially here in phase two, had him playing a different position in the offense. But he, I think Ben does a great job of moving guys around. So um, kind of what Robbie did the first year here, you know, Robbie playing the slide, he play outside. I think we started playing him a little bit at X to move him in that position as well. So I think um, I think Robbie could have a ton of production at any of those spots. How quickly is Robbie getting acclimated to the Mexican Uh pr Probably not. I mean, he, he hasn't been here, so um, he was in the meetings. Um, so uh, he's got a lot. You know, he's got he's got work to do in that regard. You know, during training camp. You started to talk about the heat. Talk about being out there and how this can help you guys for later on in July. Yeah. Well, I think um, like I had a couple guys who were walking out there today. They were saying, "Well, you know, welcome to Wofford," which I think is uh, you know is good because it's going to be hot there. Um, but as much as anything else, I think it's you know really the the, the soul of a team. You know, every, every, everyone loves to compete and work when it's easy. You know, who likes to do it in that type of weather? And for me as a coach, when you have a group of guys who work that hard without complaining, at least at least that I can hear, <laughs> um, you know, it makes it makes it easier to put the ball down and say, hey, kick a field goal to see you know if we can end this early or not. So um, that work ethic, that industriousness, um, is showing up. Matt, uh, I know you all right. Carlos Dunlap there for a visit uh, this week. Uh, do you anticipate signing either him or, or any other defensive um, lineman uh, this offseason? I think uh, defensive line, um, I, that position is something that we're always looking for guys at. Um, you know, we, we have all kinds of exploratory talks with guys, you know, um, so I can't say that anything's imminent. But, um, uh, we, you know, we're always looking for guys who can obviously win on the line of scrimmage and affect the quarterback. For the uh, veterans, uh, the ones who haven't uh, participated in minicamp, the ones who have bad days, are they going to be off tomorrow too in the same coaching role tomorrow? Yeah, I, I expect that, yeah. Would you say that Carlos' visit was more exploratory then? Uh, yeah, just uh, kind of a get together and visit, you know, kind of about what he, what he sees for himself, what we see, and um, just kind of a first step. I understand these practices are heavily scripted. For someone without the script and just observing it, look like Matt Crowell got more opportunities to throw the ball today. Um, is that accurate, first of all? Yeah, I don't, you know, so that, that, that first period, that move of the field that we did, that was all kind of unscripted, you know, sort of like, hey, whenever the offense was done. So I, I don't know who got what there in the seven on seven period. And then we had that little team, though, huddle to start practice. So there's a few more team reps anyway, okay. um, but I, I don't know the numbers in front of me. I apologize. And uh, just coming from yesterday, you know, we mentioned a lot of younger guys, even you know, newcomers at, at, at the pass catching positions uh, at times out of place and whatnot. Just your overall thoughts today on the offense um, in those periods and those competitions. Yeah, we still unfortunately have uh, guys not always doing the right thing. Um, and some of them know their position, but you know, you pull a guy out. We limited Zilstra a little bit today because he's a guy that can't pull out completely, but he deserves you know, to have his load reduced. Um, so you have, sometimes it's about guys like they know how to play the Z, but now they have to go play the X, and it's not always perfect. But um, um, but I, I didn't see anything that was a major concern for me. And you know we put on this was a hard install. We know that, that that seven on seven we did was all um, third down, and there were hard third downs. And so I think we really tried to challenge the players today, and um, there were some good things. And you know defensively there were some good things. So what do you learn from your quarterbacks when they're throwing to guys that they're not familiar with and things are a little out of place? What can you still take? From those reps. Yeah, I mean, I think I think regardless of what the outcome is, we're looking to see: you know, are they taking the right footwork? Are they in the right place? You know, if it's 
if it's one high man and they go to the go, they, they go to the one high man beater and you know if he doesn't win or if he's not there, so be it. You know, there's there's a couple times they were a guy who was running a route got got grabbed. Uh, C.J. Saunders got grabbed a couple times, so the quarterback has to scramble. But you know, it's going to be first and ten going the other way. So I think every play, you you know, everything for us from calling the play to the to the cadence to their footwork, sort of are their eyes in the right place, and then do they a deliver the ball properly or b do they when things aren't there do they you know. Not, not make the catastrophic play, but make a play out of nothing. And so I think you can see all that. It's obviously a lot easier when you can, you know, when everything's good around them, you can really evaluate the quarterback better. But, you know, quarterbacks are the guys, they have to make it right. They have to find a way to, you know, to figure it out and make it right. Matt, you said it was a confluence of events that sort of con- uh, resulted in Robbie's down season last year. What were those besides the offense? And I hope, I hope you understand this. I, I've really made a commitment to myself to kind of move forward. Um, but um, I, I think that if, if Robbie uh, has a great training camp, like I know he's capable of, I really believe, Joe, that this offense is perfect for him. I think, I think he'll have a ton of um, I think he'll have a ton of production in it. I think Terrace will have a ton of production, and I think in hiring Ben, one of the things for me was really important was I didn't want to just utilize one or two players. You know, I wanted to make sure that you know we had answers for every coverage, we had answers for every blitz, and so. Um, that should give you an idea in terms of, you know, hey, what some of my concerns were last year. Um, so my job as a coach is to have hopefully put the players in the best situation. That's the players' jobs to go out and make the plays and take advantage. And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a really good job of just looking ahead. But hopefully that gives you a picture in terms of, hey, what I expect Robbie could add to this offense. Matt, I know you said this is more of a teaching period than it is an evaluation period. But for those guys that are maybe like on the bubble of making the roster or that are on the outside looking in, how much of evaluation are you using? during this time for those guys? I think you're evaluating everything. I just don't think you can out and out win a job right now without the pads going on. But this is one certainly one stage of it, right? Um, and sometimes it's the elimination stage. Like if you can't learn or you're not serious about football, it's really hard. It's really hard to say, hey, this guy's going to change in the next five weeks and be ready for ready for training camp. So um, that being said, I think we've had a we've had a real uptick from a, some, a lot of our young players in terms of, hey, this is what preparation should look like. Um, I'm, I don't have anyone that I'm upset with. I think a lot of guys are working really hard. And so, again, I think going out in that heat today and practicing that long was, was a step in the right direction. You guys mentioned that Robbie's got work to do because he wasn't around until, until now. How, how far behind in this offense is he? And you know, has he been able to study up on the book before he got here? I mean, just kind of I yeah, know it's it, an evaluation question. But yeah, no, no. I mean, every player has the playbook. I mean, some guys, you know, like we signed Keith Kirkwood, and I remember Ben telling me he was in the hotel, and because uh, Ben's still living in the hotel, and Keith walked up to him and introduced himself, and he said, "What are you doing? Ready to do now?" He said, "I'm getting ready to meet C.J. Saunders and make sure I know the plays for tomorrow." So I mean, that's why reason why we brought Keith in, and we know he's a pro's pro and was going to learn everything. And so, um, you know, all of our players are going to have a lot of work to do between now and training camp to be ready for training camp so they can compete at a high level. And I think uh, Robbie's right there in that mix. You know, he. He's a talented player. You know he'll have to learn not just the plays, but the nuances of the plays, so that we can move him around and make him the weapon that we want. You know him to be. Was he held out today due to that hip? Um, I, I don't have a ton of information yet on that. I haven't gone back in and seen those guys. I think he, uh, I think he uh, reported that you know he didn't feel like he could go, and so um, you know we held him. Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think he reported to the trainers that you know just didn't feel like he could go physically, so um, so you know he didn't go. Good. Okay. Is there any difference with the you know we have the vets in the teaching role you know this mini camp? So is there any difference with how the young players are responding to the vets on the sideline versus like Sam you know getting the reps with the other young players and out there playing with them? In terms of how they're they're re- reacting to those other guys or yeah, like what's, is there any difference with, between how they're reacting to the vets on the sideline versus how they're reacting to like Sam who's out there with them? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think they're, you know, I think each and each each uh, guy that's not taking reps is different. You know, if you watch practice, I'd say Shaq is as demonstrative demonstrative as anyone. You know, he's he's taking this time to try to make sure he gets everyone lined up. Christian McCaffrey's a bit more demonstrative than maybe some other guys are. So I think each guy's probably different. I think the thing for Sam is really all of our quarterbacks right now. When the play's over, they, they don't have a lot of time to make start making corrections to guys on the next play. I need you to do this. They they got to get to the next play because. Play calls are long and arduous, and it's coming at you fast. And we're trying to snap the ball quickly, so um, those guys really have to be in the moment. That's what, that's why I think it's so good to step back from being a player sometimes and um, 
I mean, Christian and I were walking off of the field at walkthrough, and he was talking about how good this has been for him because every play, instead of focusing on just the, you know, make sure I do my job, he's able to kind of take a bigger picture look, a broader perspective, and say, all right, the safety's down, it could be this, and just kind of look at the game more as a coordinator than as just a, 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 a participant, a player. So, um, but in terms of how the players respond to him, I think, it, I think it's always better when you hear something from a, 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 a peer, a player, than when you hear it from the coach. Um, and you hope that the, the other players are saying the same thing as the coaches have said. That's when you have tremendous alignment. All right, thanks, guys.